What's up, people? And welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And today, I actually want to get into something that's simple, yet it's taken to the stupid. Simply because I want to talk about Ren v. US. Simply because a lot of times people are asking me um, questions about a crime and a traffic citation. Well, as you can see, I'm in the whip. But for the most part, the constructs of why Ren v. US never refers to a traffic stop as a crime is one, because you have to look at the constructs of standing. And you also have to look at this simple thing we call the Constitution. One of the amendments in the Constitution has this thing in it, little clause that's real messy, but it has the right to confront your accusers, right? Because a lot of times people kind of get into it with me about the constructs of a crime, but let's get that. But if there's a crime, you have to be able to confront those that are accusing you of such crime. Now, I've gone over a few cases. That dealt with standing. The problem is when we're talking about standing, standing is simple. It has to have an injury fairly traceable to the actions or lack thereof of the person being accused of it. So when you're having a traffic infraction, who do you confront? Who was injured? And as most of us understand the context of Latin and law, the corpus delecti, how can we bring forth the body? Who was the injured party? Who can we confront? Because I actually had a guy tell me yesterday, oh, well, the state is the injured party. Great. How, under the guise of standing, was the state injured by me not walking in a crosswalk? How was the state injured by me speeding? And even I had a guy in the comment section state, well, it's a public safety issue. Now, that goes into this simple thing called fiduciary duty, working towards the benefit of the public. My speeding is a public safety issue. Fair enough, I'll give you that. Still doesn't make that a crime. But if they are stopping me and warning me about speeding, that lets me know that their fiduciary duty is for the well-being of the public. So all these things that people are saying don't exist, all these things that I've shown you that was written, why are all of them intertwined in everything that we're doing? and everything that I'm saying. Just a little food for thought. Just keeping that in mind. In order for there to be standing, there has to be an injury. So whenever I say there must be an injured party, who can you confront if no one is injured? And the safety of the public, if the police officer is enforcing that, that means their duty is for the benefit and well-being of the public. And they also have a choice to enforce policy because that citation with a court date on it is performing judicial duties, which means that is a violation of, yes, let's say it, the Separation of Powers Act. And they have the choice to do it or not to do it. That is the question. 
And that's all I got for you right now. Supreme.